In all the masjids, there's so many classes taking place. As soon as the Imam says, Assalamu alaikum, everybody runs from the masjid. On the other hand, people are sacrificing everything that they had for the sake of one ayah. And we cannot sacrifice our comfort and our sleep to acquire knowledge. Their knowledge limited them in the permissible. Our knowledge doesn't stop us from haram. If you want to destroy a nation, you don't need a hydrogen bomb for it. You don't need a nuclear for it. Deprive a nation of education that's sufficient for them to destroy them. رَبِّ شْرَحْ لِي صَدْرِي وَيَسِّرْ لِي أَمْرِي وَحْلُ الْعُقْدَةً مِنْ لِسَانِي يَفْقَهُ قَوْلِي اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته My respected elders, beloved brothers and dear friends, the starting point of every human is ignorance. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in juz number 14, surah al-Nahl, وَاللَّهُ أَخْرَجَكُمْ مِنْ بُطُونِ أُمَّهَاتِكُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ شَيْئًا when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought you forth from the womb of your mother, you knew nothing. Imam al-Shafi'i rahimahullah has said, Ta'allam falaysa al-mar'u yuladu alima. Acquire knowledge and exert yourself in acquiring knowledge because no human is born learned. Acquire knowledge and exert yourself in the acquisition of knowledge because no human is born learned. One of the challenges that has plagued and paralyzed the Muslim Ummah today and has caused us great misery is the levels of ignorance. When we speak about our glory days of Islam, then we speak about people who were learned and people who were more learned. He was a mufti and he was a sheikh and he was a alama. The status was going higher and higher in terms of knowledge. Today it is the complete opposite. He is ignorant and he is more ignorant. He is foolish, he is more foolish. So it's no longer the levels of knowledge, it's the levels of ignorance. It's no longer the levels of, levels of knowledge, it is the levels of ignorance. When we see the coming of Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the period between Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Isa alayhi salatu wa sallam is approximately 600 years. For 600 years there was no revelation. Ignorance was everywhere. People were burying their daughters alive. For one small argument they fought for centuries, tribal wars. So in ignorance, there is no knowledge. People are killing each other. <clears throat> After 600 years of ignorance and no revelation coming down, the first wahi, the first ayah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals upon Nabiya Akram sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is iqra, read, an indication towards knowledge. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the first revelation only revealed five verses. Iqra bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq. خلق الإنسان من علق اقرأ وربك الأكرم الذي علم بالقلم علم الإنسان ما لم يعلم The entire surah was not revealed Only the first five verses of surah al-alaq were revealed And in surah al-alaq Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about two forms of knowledge Two types of knowledge In the first Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says اقرأ باسم ربك الذي خلق 
Read in the name of your Lord who created. The scholars and the people of exegesis have mentioned that in this ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is speaking about divine knowledge. Allah is speaking about knowledge which is called revelation. Allah is speaking about a special form of knowledge. And that is wahi. In the first ayah, Iqra' bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is speaking about divine knowledge, about revelation. Then Allah says, خلق الإنسان من علق. And Allah says, Iqra again. The scholars have mentioned in Iqra wa rabbuka al-akram. Allah is giving us an indication towards worldly knowledge. Or so-called secular knowledge. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us an indication towards secular knowledge. So be it revelation, wahi, or dini knowledge, or be it worldly knowledge or secular knowledge, both of these forms of knowledge is given to us as a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The only difference is the first knowledge, which is revelation, it is divine. It is protected. It is a direct connection between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a direct communication between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and it is infallible. And the second knowledge, it's not revelation. It's trial. It's error. It's not protected. And it is fallible. So the first knowledge that we spoke about has a direct communication with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is Iqra' bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq. And the second knowledge, the worldly knowledge or the secular knowledge, it is an indirect knowledge. And this knowledge, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows humans to experiment with the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And from there we learn from each other. Centuries ago, somebody started medication and we built on it. And today we have reached very far. So worldly knowledge is based on experiments, is based on learning from the past generation. And there is a fear, a great fear that it can be wrong also. So the first knowledge is revelation, it's infallible. And the second form of knowledge which we call worldly knowledge or secular knowledge, it is fallible and it is not protected. The point from both of these iqra is acquire knowledge. Whether it be dini knowledge, or Quranic knowledge, or hadith knowledge, or tafsir, or be it becoming an accountant, becoming a lawyer, becoming somebody of authority, whichever form of knowledge is, the point from both of these verses is acquire knowledge. The point from both of these verses is acquire knowledge. Today we have knowledge at our disposal. With a click of a button, you can acquire knowledge if you want today. But we don't have the desire to learn. We're living in a world where we don't have the desire to learn. Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said in a sahih hadith, Talabul ilmi faridatun ala kulli muslim. That acquiring of knowledge is compulsory upon every Muslim male and every Muslim female. Just as you can't have a Muslim who does not pray. Because a Muslim means somebody who submits to Allah. So if you call yourself a Muslim and you say you are submitting to Allah and you are not praying, it doesn't make sense. Just like that, you cannot say an ignorant Muslim. Because acquiring knowledge in Islam is compulsory. So it's a misnomer to say ignorant Muslim. It's a musnoma to say an ignorant Muslim. And look at the conditions of the Muslim today. How ignorant we are today. We have no form of knowledge, no wahi, no worldly knowledge. We're not buzzing ourselves in none of them. So today we have everything at our disposal. And Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa is telling us the importance of acquiring knowledge. 
and telling us that acquiring knowledge in Islam is compulsory. Talabul ilmi faridatun ala kulli muslim. What is meant by compulsory is whatever is fard upon you, then that is fard upon you to know. Whatever is compulsory upon you from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then that knowledge for you is compulsory to know. For example, performing salah. Every baligh and baligha, Muslim, male and female, they have to perform salah every single day. It is compulsory upon them to know how to perform salah. We don't have to know every knowledge. But there are certain things when the time comes for it, we have to have the knowledge. So performing salah, every Muslim, it is fard upon him to have the knowledge of how to perform salah correctly. The knowledge of hajj is not compulsory unless you are going for hajj. So if you haven't been for hajj and you don't have the plans to go for hajj anytime soon, you don't have to know the rituals of hajj because it's not compulsory upon you to know it. But if you intend to go for hajj and you are making plans to go for hajj, then the knowledge of hajj and how to perform hajj becomes compulsory upon you. So that, that whatever is fard upon you, whatever is compulsory upon you, then that is compulsory upon you to know. If you are opening a business, then as a Muslim it is compulsory upon you to know what is halal and what is haram before indulging in a business. You can't go into a business and do haram and say, Maaf, I didn't know about it. Because Islam has told you, طَلَبُ الْعِلْمِ فَرِيضَةٌ عَلَى كُلِّ مُسْلِمٍ Acquiring of knowledge is compulsory upon you. Whichever field you go into, whichever department you go into, whichever faculty you go into, before you go into that faculty, you must know what is, per what is permissible upon you, what is permissible for you, and what is not permissible for you. This is the teachings of Nabi Akareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So when we look at the lives of our pious predecessors, you will see they had something very different and something unique in them. And that was they had a thirst for knowledge. They had a desire to learn more. They knew Arabic. They knew the Quran. But they had the eager and desire to learn more. They traveled for thousands of kilometers on a camel's back to get one hadith. Somebody is living in Kufa, he heard that another Sahabi is living in another place, Basra for example. Then he went on his mount, or on his horse or his camel or his donkey and he rode all the way to the next location just to get one hadith. That's the desire for knowledge that they had. You know Asad bin Farat radiyallahu anhu rahimahullah who was a student of Imam Muhammad rahimahullah who in later on is a student of Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah. Imam Muhammad rahimahullah was a great Imam of his time. And Asad bin Firat, Firat knew the status of Imam Muhammad rahimahullah. So he came to Imam Muhammad and he told Imam Muhammad that I want to study by you. Please give me some time. I want to study the Quran. I want to study the Hadith. I want to study the Fiqh by you. Please give me some time so I can study by you. Now Imam Muhammad rahimahullah was really a busy man. So Imam Muhammad rahimahullah told him, I cannot teach you, I have no time. I have so many classes, so many duties, I cannot teach you. But the student Asad bin Farad kept on coming days after days. Sheikh, please give me some time. Sheikh, please give me some time. So after Imam Muhammad rahimahullah saw that this person seems to be very sincere. And he really has a desire to learn from me. So Imam Muhammad rahimahullah called him and told him that look here every morning when I wake up for Salat al-Tahajjud at that time there is nobody around me, I'm alone. So at the time of Tahajjud I can give you approximately half an hour. If you want to study by me, this is the only time I can teach you. Asad bin Farad rahimahullah says this was the end of the day for me. This is what I wanted, even few minutes in the company of this man. And Asad bin Farad rahimahullah says, the entire night I used to not sleep 
just so that I don't muster half an hour in the company of Imam Muhammad rahimahullah. This is the desire they had to learn. Ki even it's before Fajr, it's compromising on his sleep and his comfort, he had so much desire for knowledge that he compromised over everything. Put the same example in front of myself and yourself. Today a person comes to the Imam and says, Shaykh, you know, Wallahi, I have so much desire to learn the Quran. For many years I didn't get a chance. Alhamdulillah, I'm so honored. I want to learn the Quran. I want to learn the tafsir, etc. And the Shaykh tells him, look, I'm very busy. But every morning after Salat al-Fajr, I'm free for one hour. You come after Fajr, I will teach you, inshallah. The brother say, no, no, no. After Fajr is my sleeping time. This is the type of knowledge and desire we have for knowledge. On the other hand, people are sacrificing everything that they had for the sake of one ayah. And we cannot sacrifice our comfort and our sleep to acquire knowledge. In all the masjids, there's so many classes taking place. As soon as the Imam says, Assalamu alaikum, everybody runs from the masjid. I don't want to sit in a program. I'd rather go at home and sit on my, on my tablet, on my phone, or my, on YouTube, and watch a bayan. <coughs> so we no more have the desire to acquire knowledge. Our pious predecessors had a special love and a special desire to learn. Shaykh Abdul Fattah Abu Ghudda Rahimahullah, a great alim of Sham, Syria, he actually compiled a book mentioning the names of those scholars who adopted celibacy in the quest of knowledge. These scholars did not get married for the sake of knowledge. These scholars did not eat well and sleep well for the sake of knowledge. It is mentioned about Imam Nabawi rahimahullah. That Imam Nabawi rahimahullah for two years, he did not put his back on the ground. Whenever he was tired, he took power naps. Sitting on his place where he was studying, he should fall off to sleep, wake up and start to study again. He had no time to go and cook his food. No time for entertainment. Because that's the desire they had to learn. Desire for learning that they had. So look at the lives of these people and you will come to a conclusion. That these people's knowledge limited them in the permissible. It is permissible to get married. It is permissible to eat good food. But they said if I'm going to get married and start cooking it will take me a lot of time. I'll be missing out on knowledge. So I prefer having something quick and simple and just continue to learn. So their knowledge limited them in the permissible. Our knowledge does not forbid us from the haram also. Their knowledge limited them in the permissible. Our knowledge doesn't stop us from haram. Our knowledge doesn't stop us from haram. And that's one of the problems today in the world. We don't have true knowledge. We don't have true knowledge. Ulama have said if knowledge does not bring change in one's life, then come to a conclusion you have not acquired knowledge. If you say you have acquired knowledge, and that knowledge is not bringing change in your life, then you have not acquired knowledge, you have acquired information. You have not acquired knowledge, you have acquired information. You will get information from Google. You will get information from YouTube. But knowledge, you get it at the heart of the scholars and the feet of the scholars. When you tell yourself, I want to learn, Allah will open the doors of goodness for you. But when you tell yourself, I know everything, then Allah closes the doors of goodness for you. Because you know everything, what's there what's to learn? You're telling yourself, I know everything. So what's the need, what's, what's the need to learn then? They say the ulama have written, you can download information. You can't download knowledge. You can't download knowledge. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he gives somebody knowledge, Allah has given him a lot. If Allah gives somebody knowledge, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you a lot. Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu used to say, ma nadimtu ala shay'in 
ندمي على يوم غربت الشمس اقترب فيه أجلي ولم يزد فيه عملي Ibn Mas'ud radiyallahu anhu says I did not regret anything in my life as much as I regretted seeing the sun rising and seeing the sun setting and knowing very well that my knowledge has not increased knowing that I'm going closer to my grave and my good actions has not increased a man like Abdullah ibn Mas'ud somebody who the Prophet spoke very highly of if anybody wants to take the Quran the way it was revealed then take it from Umm Ab- Ab- Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu look at his statement what he's telling me and you the greatest regret he had was to see the sun rising and setting and his knowledge has not increased Wallahi for myself and yourself not one day not one week not one month but Ramadan upon Ramadan has gone by in our life for some people decades have gone but they have not increased their knowledge at all not days and not months but for us years has gone by we have not increased our knowledge we have not increased our knowledge we have become stagnant we have become stagnant in our worldly matters and we have become stagnant in our deeny matters every form of knowledge is compulsory upon us to know not every person has to become a doctor but Imam Ghazali rahimahullah has mentioned that every branch of knowledge which is indispensable for the welfare of mankind is for the kifaya upon the ummah to acquire that knowledge so not everybody has to become a scholar but every single muslim must know the basics of deen not every single muslim has to become an accountant is there if there is few accountants that's good enough but every single muslim must have the basic knowledge of his deen he must have the basic knowledge of his deen i was speaking to you about the sahaba and the people after them how much desire they had to learn abdullah ibn mas'ud radiyallahu anhu used to say with regards to the quran there isn't a verse in the quran but i am aware of it how it was revealed where it was revealed and what prompted its revelation to come down but if anybody tells me there is somebody on the other side of the earth who has an ayah which i do not know about or something more to say than what i know then i abdullah ibn mas'ud radiyallahu anhu is obliged to go to that person and take that knowledge from him i abdullah ibn mas'ud radiyallahu anhu is obliged to go to that person and increase my knowledge so today we don't have the desire to acquire islamic knowledge i told you both forms of knowledge be it islamic or be it worldly knowledge both knowledge is given to us by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala acquire both of them very sadly today we are not connected to the acquisition of islamic knowledge and if per chance we do connect ourselves with islamic knowledge there is dilution in our intentions we are acquiring the islamic knowledge to become famous or to be known as a sheikh or i want people to respect me like how they respect the sheikh so we want to acquire islamic knowledge with ulterior intentions ulterior motives or to earn more respect or to get a degree or to get a diploma so if per chance we do acquire islamic knowledge there is dilution in our intentions nabi akram sallallahu alaihi wasallam has given a stern warning with regard to this type of people nabi akram sallallahu alaihi wasallam has said man talab al ilma li yumari bihi as sufaha aw li yubahi bihi al ulama aw li yasrif wujuh al nas ilayhi fa huwa fi nar rawahu ibn majah nabi akram sallallahu alaihi wasallam said whoever acquires knowledge to impress others and acquires knowledge to compete and argue with the foolish and to compete with the ulama and that people must come and surround me and come around me then tell him his abode is the fire of jahannam 
Amongst the first people who will be thrown into the fire of Jahannam, Allah protect us, is a alim of the deen. He used the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the knowledge Allah gave him in a wrong way. He did not acquire that knowledge for the sake of Allah. He acquired that knowledge for the sake of name and fame, to become famous, to become known, to get some money, to get some context. So this is very sad today as Muslims. We are not acquiring Islamic knowledge. And if perchance we do get to connect ourselves with somebody who has knowledge, we have dilutions in our intentions. So we have to correct ourselves. Another important point your ulama have mentioned, which is very common today here. We don't acquire knowledge to earn sustenance. This is the wrong mindset we have. You meet the old people telling the youngsters, hey, become a doctor, a lot of money in there. You must become a neurosurgeon, you'll make millions. Don't go into accounting, there's no jobs. Become this, become this, or become a lawyer. There's a lot of money in it, you'll be successful. Something which is known to be so elevated, and something which is known to be so powerful, we have reduced it to some pens, some, coin, some coins. So even acquiring knowledge, becoming a doctor, become a lawyer, we have reduced it to something which is so insignificant. Dunya money. We acquire knowledge to benefit ourselves. We acquire knowledge to make Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala happy. And we acquire that very same knowledge to serve the creation of Allah. If you become a doctor, you will get money. But make your intention, I'm becoming a doctor to bring comfort to other people's life. Every patient you will take care of, Allah is going to reward you, Allah is going to bless you. <coughs> so whatever field you take, Islam has encouraged, become an alim, become a scholar, become a mufti, become a doctor, become a lawyer, become everything. There is no limitations, acquire. Abdullah ibn Barak rahimahullah said, you are a student of knowledge from the cradle to the grave. There's another wrong mindset we have, that knowledge is for the youngsters. All people know, we know everything. It's a masnoma. Knowledge is for everybody. Every day we're learning something new. It's not only for the youth, it's for everybody. The moment you, earn, you, you reach 50 years old, you start giving advice, and you don't increase your own knowledge. You become a role model. But you have no knowledge. So we have to acquire knowledge. If you're acquiring knowledge for the sake of money, Fir'aun had a lot of money also. Qarun had gold coins and silver coins, name everything he had. So we don't acquire knowledge for the sake of money. We acquire knowledge for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Urwa ibn Zubair radiallahu anhu was asked, what is your goal in life? He said, atamanni an akuna aliman amilan ya'khud an-nas anni kitab rabbihim wa sunnata nabiyihim wa ahkam dinihim wa an afuza fil akhirati birid Allah azza wa jal. He said, my aim in life is to acquire knowledge of the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to change my life. He didn't say, I acquire knowledge to change other people's lives. Many brothers acquire knowledge to say, no, no, I want to work in the ummah and help other people. Help yourself first. You acquire knowledge to change your own life first. And in the process, to positively have an impact on other people's life. And at the end, win the happiness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and enter Jannah al -Firtus. That is our aim in, not, in, in acquiring knowledge. To change my life and in the process if other people can benefit, masha'Allah. And at the end to serve the humanity, the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and win the happiness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Real knowledge or true knowledge will translate into two things. When a person has true knowledge, it will translate into two things. When you have knowledge, the first thing that will come in your life is respect. When you have true knowledge, the first thing that you will have in your life is respect. And the second thing you'll have is fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If your knowledge is not bringing respect in your life, if your knowledge is not making you a good person, is not fixing your tongue, is not making your akhlaq correct, 
you have no fear of Allah, then you have to question that knowledge. Because true knowledge and real knowledge and divine knowledge will translate you into two things. Number one, it will bring the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it will bring akhlaq and good morals and respect in your life. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu used to say that if your knowledge has brought you to Allah in fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then you have acquired adequate knowledge. And if your knowledge has made you oppressed, uh, obsessed with yourself and you feel too, imp too, imp too bloated that I know everything, alhamdulillah, I'm this, I'm that then Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu says this is the reflection of your ignorance. If your knowledge brought the fear of Allah, you have got adequate knowledge. And if your knowledge has brought pride, arrogance, superiority, I am better than him, I am higher than him, then this is a reflection of your ignorance. This is a reflection of your ignorance. Our ignorance is killing us. Our ignorance is killing us. Today as Muslims, we are being butchered and massacred throughout the four corners of the world. Why? For the lack of knowledge. Because of our ignorance. Ignorance is our worst enemy. As long as ignorance prevails in Muslim communities, there will always be people who will manipulate our ignorance. There will always be people who will manipulate our ignorance and make, make us destroy ourselves. Through infighting, through confusion. Look at the conditions of the masjid around the world. Look at the conditions of the madaris, the institutions. How much fighting from the top till the bottom, everybody is in politics. The trusty boards of masjids are fighting. And each one is saying he's fighting for the deen of Allah. What brought us to this conclusion is our ignorance. The lack of knowledge has destroyed us from every angle. We think we know too much, we know nothing. Look at the condition of the masjids. See how people are fighting for power. How people are taking other people's lives indirectly by hit this guy, hit that guy, do this to him, do that to him. Why is this happening to us? For the lack of knowledge. We have distanced ourselves from knowledge because of that we have ended ourselves in this condition. The truth is today, in many Muslim communities, we feel we know everything. We don't need advice. Advice is for other people. That's a wrong mindset to have. We think nasiha is for the people who don't practice. We, alhamdulillah, we are practicing for many 20 years, 30 years. We're reading salah, we're reading Quran, so we're good enough. Nasiha and advice is for other people who don't pray. That's our mindset we have. We know everything. We don't need anything. We don't have no true knowledge. The fact is in today many Muslim communities, we don't have true knowledge. We only have two forms of knowledge or two types of knowledge. The first knowledge that we have is we have harmful knowledge. As Muslims, we only have harmful knowledge, how to hurt the next person. If somebody wants to do something good for the sake of Allah, how to stop him? If somebody wants to do a program, how to cancel his program? How to create fitna in his program. If two people want to get married, how to break them. So today as Muslims, we have only harmful knowledge. And we are very good at it. We got A's in everything there. We should be given a gold award for that. We have broken so many people's life with harmful knowledge. Anybody intended to do something good. If two brothers or two sisters were fighting. Instead of bringing them together and they were planning to come together, we come intervene and say, no, no, don't unite with him. It's a dangerous guy. So we don't have beneficial knowledge. We only have harmful knowledge. That's the first type of knowledge we have in today in Muslim communities. And the second knowledge we have today is useless knowledge. Okay, Liverpool won. What's the history of Liverpool? Ask a youngster today, he'll tell you the whole history of Liverpool. How much Salah weighs? How many plans, he, games he intends to play, how much wealth he got, what his net worth, everything they know. So we have harmful knowledge and we have useless knowledge. Beneficial knowledge is very far away from us. This is the reason why we are in the condition that we are in. If you want to destroy a nation, 
You don't need a hydrogen bomb for it. You don't need a nucleus for it. Deprive a nation of education, that's sufficient for them to destroy them. If you want to destroy an entire nation, deprive them of knowledge. When the entire earth was deprived of knowledge, Allah sent down the Quran. اقرأ باسم ربك الذي خلق خلق الإنسان من علق اقرأ وربك الأكرم الذي علم بالقلم علم الإنسان ما لم يعلم My point here is acquire knowledge Whatever knowledge you want to acquire Make sure it is beneficial knowledge Become a doctor, become a scientist, become everything Become a scholar also The point is acquire knowledge Ulama have written That every single balig Muslim male must be capable of reciting the Quran correctly. He must be capable of performing Salah correctly. Every single Muslim male must be capable of performing the Salah as an Imam. If the Imam is late or the Imam is unwell, the entire masjid is in confusion. Who's going to lead? No, no, you go, brother, you go. No, no, you're more better than me. Suddenly you become very pious in these matters. Every single Muslim male must be capable of performing salah. If your son is getting married or your daughter is getting married, you as a lay Muslim man must be capable of performing their nikah. This is compulsory upon you. If your father passed away, if your father passes away, then you are most deserving of performing salatul janazah. And you are the most deserving of making dua at his grave. The dua you will make, the imam can't make that dua. The feeling you will have, the fear you will have, the pain you will have. So every single Muslim male must be capable of performing his own daughter's nikah, son's nikah, or if his father passes away, perform his father's salatul janazah. We're talking so much, we don't even know how to perform salah correctly. If you look at the condition of our salah, it's really bad, including myself. We have made salah as a ticking box. I just done my salah. How I done it, don't ask me. But you in your heart know you have done injustice to your salah also. So you have to question yourself. You know when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decides to bless someone. When Allah wants something good for you, you know what he does for you? He'll give you knowledge. When Allah wants to benefit you, and Allah wants intends something good for you, Whoever you are, wherever you are, and from wherever you are. When Allah intends something good for you, Allah gives you knowledge. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, مَنْ يُرِدِ اللَّهُ بِهِ خَيْرًا يُفَقِّهُ فِي الدِّينِ مَنْ يُرِدِ اللَّهُ بِهِ خَيْرًا يُفَقِّهُ فِي الدِّينِ If Allah intends goodness for someone, Allah gives him the understanding of deen. Allah gives him the understanding of religion. And Nabi, my point is acquire knowledge. Busy yourself. In this masjid, other masjid, there's so many classes taking place. Be part of those classes. Come face to face and acquire knowledge. We have two imams, two scholars. Take knowledge from them. Because our ignorance is killing us. And the one who will acquire knowledge, and he'll make an effort to acquire knowledge. Then Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, if he's sincere, what's the benefit? The fish in the ocean makes dua for him. The malaika make dua for him. Even the animals in the jungles make dua for him. Okay, this person, Allah is giving him nur. Allah is giving him light. They make dua for him. Because they know, okay, if this person has knowledge, his knowledge will make him not harm anybody else. When you don't have knowledge, you'll kill the animal, you won't even care about it. But the animals also know that much. Okay, if this person has knowledge, he will not harm me. So when you acquire knowledge, and you take the path of knowledge, then even the malaika make dua for you. Even the fish in the ocean make dua for you. Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Man salaka tariqan yaltamu yatlubu fihi ilman, salaka Allahu bihi min turqil janna ila akhiril hadith. Same what I have just said. Abu Darda radiallahu anhu said, Kun aliman, aw muta'alliman, aw muhibban, aw muttabi'an, wa la takun al-khamisa fatuhlik. Abu Darda radiallahu anhu said, Be a scholar. He said, Be a scholar. If you can't become a scholar, then become a student of a scholar. If you cannot become a student, become a devotee. And you cannot become a devotee of a scholar, then at least become a follower. 
do not become the fourth one. The, fourth, uh, the fifth one, sorry. Do not become the fifth one. Meaning, do not be someone who just follows his desires. Because you will be destroying yourself. Do not be someone who go against the scholars. Today we have a culture in our Muslim communities. Ki we have no knowledge. But we have the right and the license to speak about scholars. Ki he is right and he is wrong. He is right and he is wrong. We have no knowledge. We don't know how to even write knowledge in Arabic properly. And we are making conclusions on those people who spend their entire life acquiring knowledge. We are talking down about people involving ourselves. About people who spend their entire life in acquiring knowledge. Today in the world that you are living in. If you want to become a scholar. You don't have to go become an alim. Go to this madrasa and go to that madrasa. They say just turn your collar. You become a scholar. Isn't it? We are living in this world. A brother doesn't know anything of deen. He just turns his collar. He says alhamdulillah I studied something. So today in the world we are living in, you don't have to acquire knowledge and exert yourself to become a scholar. Just turn your collar and you'll become a scholar today. In English they say it's alright not to know. But it's not alright not to know and not to know that you don't know. And not to seek the knowledge after you know you don't know. Some people are confused. It's alright not to know. But it's not alright not to know and not to know that you don't know. And not to seek the knowledge after you know you don't know. The less you read, the more dependent you'll be on television. The, more le the less you read, the more dependent you'll be on other people's information. So the point is acquire knowledge, exert yourself in the acquisition of knowledge, and be amongst those who make an effort to acquire knowledge inshaAllah ta'ala. I have taken five minutes extra. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us, to protect us. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant shifaya kamila, ajila, mustamira, daima to those who are sick and those who have passed away. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fill the qabr with nur. Ameen ya rabbal alameen. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika. Nashadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk.